Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to BitFixer. Today marks the beginning of DG April, a month where we're going to talk about the Digital Group, one of my personal favorite computers of the 1970s. Now, not to be confused with the much more well-known Digital Equipment Corporation, the Digital Group was a company based in Colorado, started in 1974, that lasted until 1979. This particular one is from 1978 and used a Z80 microprocessor. So let's take a look. Well, let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. Now it's a large box with really a lot of empty space in here. There's a back plane with some cards in it, and it bears a pretty strong resemblance to an S100 machine, but it is not. It's its own separate bus, also known as the Suiting Bus, after Dr. Robert Suiting, the co-founder and chief designer of the digital group. Here's the CPU card with its distinctive white Z80. Also has an EEPROM over here. This particular machine is set up to load from cassette but a disk model was available as well and has a little bit of memory on the CPU board. This is the Digital Group Input-Output Board, which gives you four 8-bit inputs and four 8-bit outputs. Uh, in this machine, it's only used for the keyboard. And here's the TV readout and cassette board, which provides composite video output and also runs the cassette interface for loading and saving programs. And this one is, I believe, an 8K memory card. 2102 RAMs. All right, let's fire it up and see what happens. See the lights light up there. There's a power and reset button. And so far, nothing on the screen. But then found out I needed to switch a impedance switch on the back. And there we go. This is what we boot up to. On this ROM, this is it says read Z80 initialize cassette, and it's waiting for us to uh, play in the Z80 operating system. So I've got an audio copy of the Z80 initialize program here that I'm going to play in through my computer. So we're going to hooked it up in the back through the cassette port and I'm just going to hit play and we'll see what happens. As you're loading something in from cassette on this computer you'll see some numbers start to crawl across the screen. That's showing you the address in memory that is currently being loaded and just an indicator that something's happening with the loading. Uh, apparently something's going wrong here because it's slowing down and then finally stopping. So we'll have to figure out what's happening there. I tried adjusting the volume to a few different settings and tried again, but still no luck, at least not from this computer. So we're going to try something else. I looked around the house for another device that still had an actual uh, audio jack on it, and the first one I came across was my kid's older uh, iPad here. So. We're going to give this a try. And we hit play, we're loading, we're loading, and this time it actually worked. We see the memory test show up. And back again with the Z80 operating system. We'll see if that one works as well. And yes, it does. We see Z80 Opsys here. And the options we have are not very extensive, but we can read, we can write, octal program, and hex program. The digital group keyboard is a foam and foil capacitive type, and it does not work like a lot of others of its type from that time period. Um, so while I'd like to restore it someday, for the purposes of getting an input into the computer, I'm going to use a microcontroller project from a few years ago that I did, which is uh, essentially a keyboard replacement. Um, the keyboard is really just an ASCII keyboard, so if you hit a letter, its ASCII representation comes up on uh, seven data lines. So you see here I'm going to use a serial terminal on a PC, 
and we're going to use that to uh, act like a digital group keyboard. So we're going to load up again using the iPad for audio and we have the PC using the, and the microcontroller for a keyboard so we can actually interact with the computer now. So we've loaded up a memory test which we're going to run and let's see we've seen memory extent test RAM found on system and we're going from 0 to 107,377. Now that number is an octal and uh, in decimal that's 36,607 so what I'm thinking is I might have been wrong about the 8K memory card. We actually might have more memory than that. And while we have the keyboard hooked up here, let's try out a few other pieces of software and see how those work. Here we have the famous Lunar Lander game. We've been chosen as a pilot for the first experimental lunar landing mission. Now, keyboard or not, I basically don't know how to control this game at all, so needless to say, we immediately crash into the ground here. Uh, but it's pretty interesting to see how graphics work on this computer. Essentially, you just write characters to the first output port on the Z80, and uh, the TV card draws the image on the screen. You don't have uh, the ability to address independent characters, you just have to redraw the entire screen if you want to change anything. And here's another one of the games available for the digital group. It's Galaxy in 32 and 64 column modes. This is essentially the uh, Star Trek game that everyone knows. You can do your short range scan and fire your torpedoes and whatnot. Always fun. There were a few different flavors of BASIC available as well. This one is called Business BASIC. And uh, it's, your, it's your usual BASIC here. Just going to type in a little program and uh, see if everything works as I expect. And you can see here that I'm printing out DG January on here instead of DG April, which was my original intent of when to release this video. Uh, but things happen and it became DG April instead. And finally, we have what is probably one of my favorite uh, demo programs on this computer. It's a very early method of generating music on your computer and I believe a similar demo existed on the Altair as well. Here you can see I found a radio around one of these emergency crank radios and uh, we're loading in this program. I've oh, got to crank up the radio now. Need that power. And this is a program called Flag and let's see what it does. Now what you're hearing here is the Z80 is running a specific pattern of instructions in such a way that it's generating enough RF interference that you can actually tune in on AM to a specific frequency and you can pick up musical notes, if you can call them that. So you could construe this as a very early attempt at a sound card, but uh, I'm not sure I would recommend it. So that's about all for this first look at the digital group. Uh, please check in again later where we'll have some more videos in April for DG April. We're going to look at how to build some new software for the digital group in the year 2022, as well as a digital group emulator. And I'll leave you here with the strains of the Star Spangled Banner being played on a Z80. Thanks for watching.